I was so surprised by the reaction of my first episode of Vita Highlight. I wasn't expecting to actually get comments saying that they wanted more episodes. I always ask for feedback, but you know, I don't really get it that often, so it was really nice. So for the second episode, I wanted to talk about a game that wasn't exactly received well, but I actually enjoyed my time with it, which is what I'll probably do pretty often with Vita Highlight episodes. The games don't necessarily have to have been critically praised, but if I think they're awesome, then I want to tell you about them, because maybe you'll think they're awesome as well. So with the upcoming hype of Spider-Man for PS4 that looks completely awesome, I wanted to talk about a Spider-Man game for PlayStation Vita that gets looked over very often, and that game is The Amazing Spider-Man. So let's swing on into this second episode. <laughs> The Amazing Spider-Man, who would have thought that the Vita would have gotten this game? As you know, the Vita wasn't really getting much support from Western Studios, and I thought it was really cool of Activision to actually attempt to bring this to the Vita. The problem with the Vita version that a lot of people didn't like was that it runs pretty crappy, and I'll be honest, the game does not run great. But I personally don't think it fully detracts from what the game has to offer. If you look at the game as a full-blown console experience, it was pretty mediocre, but even with the downgraded graphics as a handheld experience, it actually feels pretty grand to have a game like this in the palm of your hands. There isn't many open world games on PlayStation Vita, probably because the hardware can't really handle them. As you can tell in The Amazing Spider-Man, the game chugs pretty bad, but it has a sprawling open world of New York that you can swing your way through. The swinging isn't like one-to-one -one like how it is in Spider-Man 2 and the upcoming Spider-Man on PS4. You're not actually swinging from the buildings, which I thought is the biggest letdown of this game. But other than that, the swinging is still a blast. You know, you're still Spider-Man flying through the city. And there's tons of cool tricks you can do as Spider-Man either way. But one thing I really like about this game is actually the combat. If you're a fan of the Arkham series, the Batman Arkham games, you're gonna love this game. It's pretty much the same idea. You have your basic attacks and you can parry or block when you get these little spider senses and it's a lot of fun. And there's one thing I noticed about the upcoming Spider-Man game on PS4 is that Spider-Man actually utilizes the environment to take out his enemies. In this game, it's the exact same way. You can use things like tanks and boxes to throw at your enemies or throw them at, and it actually is surprisingly good. Especially when you're in buildings. When you're outside in the city, the game runs kind of crappy, as I said. But when you're inside buildings, the game actually runs a lot better, even when there's a lot of enemies on screen. So aside from loving the open world aspect and the combat being a lot of fun, the game actually has full-blown voice cast, an interesting story, and just the feeling of having a console-like experience on the handheld. I think this game got overlooked quite a bit because of the console versions. And don't get me wrong, if this was the console version on the go, I would be more impressed. But the fact that they even attempted to put this game on a handheld, I can give them props for because I think it works. There's tons of content, tons of side missions you can do, so if you're a fan of open world games or Batman games today, then I think you would actually have a lot of fun with this game. There's awesome comic collectibles and there's different suits that you can get, and it's just overall I think a fun experience to be had. The only unfortunate thing about all of this is that due to licensing, the game actually isn't on PSN anymore. I have it downloaded on my Vita, but if you have a Vita now and you don't already have it downloaded or in your library, it's impossible to have the digital version. Luckily, I still see the game a lot at GameStop. It's like one of the few Vita games that I actually see all the time. So it shouldn't be that hard to get your hands on. And I actually know there's a lot of Vita owners who love physical media, so it's pretty much a win-win if you're a fan of that. It's available physical on like a lot of recent Vita games, and it's a pretty damn good game if I'm being completely honest. I think you should give it a chance and let me know what you think of this episode of Vita Highlight. I just want to highlight the games that I love and the games that I think aren't appreciated enough. Once again, thanks a lot for the feedback for my first episode about Odin Sphere. You should check that episode out if you missed it. I'll talk to you down in the comments section below again. I'm Brett Medlock and I will talk to you guys later.